Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. In this episode, we have special guest Goran Jovic. Goran is a world-famous photographer from Croatia who takes pictures all over the world. Uh, he has won 30 international awards for his photography and has over 200,000 followers on Instagram where he posts his work. Uh, in this episode, we're going to find out more about him and what inspires his photography. Goran, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for inviting me, Stanko. Yes, I appreciate you coming on here to talk to us and the Croatian diaspora. Um, before we sort of get started about, you know, your photography career and how all that started, uh, can you talk a little about your background? You know, I know you're from Imotski. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, that and growing up? Yeah, my early childhood is like actually Germany. I was born over there near Stuttgart. And then I came to Imotski, spent some years here and then high school and college and split yeah i guess most of the people know about split because it's a hot spot lately for all the tourists around the world <laughs> yeah split is a great that's where probably everyone goes when they come on vacation in the summer the split it's, it's a must visit definitely <laughs> did you like it over there for college uh yeah high school so so you know because i'm coming from a different city so i had a different accent you know how is it like in high school and then you have some troubles with bullying and stuff but it actually did good for me you know you you grow you get stronger and later on college it was amazing you know when you took your take your stand so in general yeah split i can say it was a good experience mm -hmm. what did you study in college uh sports physical education teacher i don't know how is it called in u.s so in general about sports so you can work in a high school or you can be like a personal coach and mm -hmm. everything and with, with that background it's maybe something like kinesiology yeah yeah actually that that's the right word uh okay okay oh nice well that's a that's a lot different than photography how did, how did you get started with that well, all my life was uh, sports, like I was a soccer player and later like different kind of sports and photography and camera was not even close in any of my sites. But one day, uh, my friend who was working and living in, in New York City came and he pushed me, actually, it was winter, it was 3 a.m. in the morning, it was cold, freezing cold, raining morning he called me like i have this awesome new camera let's go let's shoot some shots in emotski i was like are you crazy like no no way i'm gonna go out now especially you know do photos like oh, what is that but he was resistant he pushed me i went i fell in love next day i, I asked him like okay how, how much is this camera and i think it was like around 500 dollars i went to the bank okay this is your money you can buy yourself a new one when you're back back to new york city played one year with that camera my i don't know first european trip to spain i had some crazy moments over there and this was it like all my savings that i had for a few years i sent to my friend again new york city you know i want this this and this and my new babies were waiting for me on my first trip to U.S. So, yeah, that, that that was the beginning of the story. Wow. So the day after, you you already knew that you needed a camera like that and you wanted to take more pictures. Yeah, I'm grateful to my friend. Otherwise, I'm not sure if I would, you know, do it by myself. You know, what? what? Like, it's mm -hmm. sports. That was my, my story. Well, what were you taking pictures of in Imotski? I know they have the lake there. I've never been yet, but... Well, I guess many passionate photographers start like that. You shoot everything, basically everything, from little rocks, flowers, cats, dogs, people, landscapes, I don't know, playing with uh, light painting at night. Mm. And then, you know, you, you find your pathway. So my passion is like people and portraits and capturing their personalities. And the way I always describe it is like, it's my communication with the uh, with a person in front of the lens. You know, I have moments before and after I took the photo. So it's not just that moment. It's the whole story, at the background yeah. of each shot. Well, how did it transition from, you know, you're in Imotski taking pictures that first day to all of a sudden you're traveling across the world 
you know, taking pictures? What was sort of that transition? It, it was funny because I, I know, again, it was snowing and I went outside to do some shots. It was also after the midnight. And since I, my village is on the border, uh, we have a lot of police circling around and then they stopped like, is everything okay? I was with the tripod and the camera. I said, yeah, okay. And they say, yeah, but it's freezing cold. What are you doing with it? And I said, like, I'm waiting for the storm to come, like lightning and stuff. And they're like, oh, okay. Have a nice night. But, you know, in, in their eyes, I, I saw the big question mark. Was like, okay, he's a little bit crazy. Yeah, but they... that police officer a few years later told me I was in that car and... I apologize. You know, I had my opinion about you, but you huge respect now for all your achievements. Wow. Huh. That's pretty cool. It is. It is. I even my family, like, they were like kind of like, okay, what what are you doing? Like spending all your all of your money on, on cameras and, and trips. Okay, trips, okay, but you know, giving few thousand dollars for a lens. Hmm. Yeah, it seems like it's not so easy. much money for such yeah. a small part. Yeah, not easy to understand, but you know, like everything else, if you're passionate about, about anything, uh, either like you'll give your everything for, for your passion. Mm -hmm. And later, even like it became my, my financial support. So I didn't plan anything. Is it was just you know coming, meeting new people, starting to work for. The Snowba TV for I don't know six seven years and many awards and everything like for me it was like a dream like is this happening so you know, li literally li living your dream traveling and making photography and later like videography. Hmm. So it wasn't your goal to make a career out of it at first. It just sort of fell into that direction. I actually didn't did have like no plan at all. Many people are asking me how should I start we. We love what you do. Can you give me a tip? Actually, there is no tip. There is no recipe. Like it's, it's your your own meal that you need to cook and put you all your ingredients. For me, it's it's a lot of work, a lot of passion. It was uh, never as my kume, like the best man said. There is no no ne to us. Like if we have a goal, do whatever is necessary to take that photo or to achieve your goal. And this is it. If you feel it, just go for it. Of course, your, I don't know, again, family and friends will say, maybe this is not the right pathway for you. But if you believe it's wrong, this is it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's important. The, the first step to take that step and then to continue with it and be consistent, I think. Exactly. Yeah. Now, where did you first um, travel to internationally to take pictures? Which country? Uh, I don't know. Did you think about Europe or uh, outside Europe? Yeah, in general, anywhere outside of Croatia, I guess. Okay, I I can mention the the Spain because it was like my let's call it the first trip outside of Croatia and with my first little camera and it was uh, middle of the night. I was walking with my friend and then an old lady with a gentleman walking and she's a like you know photographer in in Spanish and I just nodded. I was still at no experience, no nothing. And she came to the wall and she, how is it called in English, when she stood up on her hands and she had a big dress, long dress, and the dress fell down and I was like shaking. I did one shot. She was basically in lingerie. Huh. Okay, one part, one part of the lingerie. <laughs> and, you know, she came back and I checked the photo. I showed her. She says, amazing. And the gentleman gave her the hand, they continued. And I, that from that moment for me, like, okay, I, this is a powerful tool. I need to continue. Like, it's it's such an amazing moment. Well, yeah. So, so you didn't even, she came up to you to ask you to take a picture. Of yeah, her. she saw the camera and can, can you do the shot? I said, okay. And first, I don't know how many seconds, I was like shocked. What is that? And yeah, and like, later after that, New York City, like big ex experience to went over there all this crowded streets and, and shining lights and I was impressed for the first 10 days but then I needed more I needed uh, stories so I went to Harlem spent time with uh, homeless people with uh, veterans and you know 
people with with deep stories and it was like impressive for me you know to capture their stories in, in one shot that was a real challenge and a challenge you know how to connect to them mm -hmm. so you're taking pictures more of people walking on the streets rather than you know buildings or uh... yeah always people above everything and for me it's also when when people ask me what is the best country best place that you traveled every time i connected with people so sometimes they expect a different answer for mo hmm. for me it's like always moments with people well, yeah you stole my question my next question that's what i was gonna ask <laughs> what your your favorite so so how is it that you go about now connecting with these people and asking them to take pictures again all, uh, never a same moment sometimes you can just it's a feeling. Sometimes you just take the camera and, and catch the moment. Sometimes you spend some time with the people, you know, even a few days, just not, not take any shots. Like when I spent uh, one month with Maasai tribe in, in Tanzania, I don't know, for a few, few days I was not, I didn't do like any, any shots until I felt the moment when I kind of like became part of their daily routine so they didn't pay so much attention mm. what i'm doing and then i started to do my my photos and actually those photos uh, are the first one who got the rewards abroad mm -hmm. which awards were those let's talk about the awards a little bit yeah the, the most famous photo is the rainbow like it was a baptizing ceremony it was like i don't know like close to 100 people from little babies few months old and uh, grown-ups old grown-ups it was like uh how is it called missiona in english missionary uh, missionary doing catholic baptizing and after the baptizing we went to this muddy hut you know how they have like uh, those little houses made out of the mud and and mm. uh, ashes and it started to rain and at that time, the chief of the village prepared some food, and they cut little pieces of the of the meat, and we share in circle. But outside on the rain, there was a boy. Like he was like frozen, looking at us, and I never got the answer. Was it about me, the the white man over there? Because it was really remote, distant. You cannot find like tourists over there, or he was just hungry. So. My first reaction was like, I want to give him my peace. And the chief said, no, like uh, they need to respect us, wait for their time. And when we are finished with our meal, if they have some leftovers, they can receive. And then like this strong look that he had toward me, it was like impulse reaction of me that I took the camera and, and captured that moment. And one year later, I started to send that photo to competition and that photo won actually eight eight international competitions so that that photo basically changed my whole life you know because that was recognition of other people that i did something that it's not ordinary mm -hmm. that's not i mean that sounds like a i mean that's an incredible like incredible experience it sounds like a lot of work to set up like how do you go about setting up that trip where i mean are you there with a translator um you know you're there for a whole month how, how does that what goes Usually in? I go to the, you know, last, last uh, civilized, let's call it civilized village when you have like cars and stuff and when you can catch some informations and there, there, of course, you need to find your guide because, you know, where to go. Like it's some tribes, it's not just they are remote, but first, where exactly are they? And second, well, how to communicate with them when you're over there? Because your guide is actually the first the first connection with them, then you bring some presents, nah, depends. You can bring some coffee, some food, some razor blades, like if the tribe is doing their scarification, even some alcohol, because one tribe is, they are drinking heavily. So you always ask the guy, what is the best thing that I can bring to them? Huh. And that's and you your, like, yeah, that's, that's the first card you throw, like, as, as your friendship toward them. And so when you're traveling to these places, do you 
just travel to a place that I mean is of interest to you and then you look for a guide once you're there or do you pre-plan you know to make sure that you have someone there in the area in the country or is no, this no. actually base, basic information about the people that I want to visit and then basically everything on the field wow. but not yeah now is easier because you know after so much experience and, and years of traveling like uh, when I announce some trip People are sending me messages on Instagram, like, if you need any help, mm. I can guide you, I can give you a tips, I can, like, you know, everything that, that you need, it's, Instagram is it's insane, like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, when did you start your in, Instagram? In a positive way. Can I get yeah. it? When did you start your Instagram? It's grown, it's over, I think, 200 and something thousand followers. Yeah, uh, 2015, uh friend polish photographer she pushed me into it also like it looks like i have always friends who are pushing me towards something and at, at that time i only had facebook and she's like like you need to create an instagram because you're a photographer i said like you know it's facebook is already too much for me and no need for that but again she was like okay can you just make your account and then you know you'll see and then i created an account and because it was connected with the facebook I suddenly receive all, not all my friends, but most of them when I was like, okay, it's it's interesting. And later, public, pub, publication, rewards, TV, uh, again, publishing on, on huge Instagram accounts, the photos that I created, it, you know, it was in waves, growing rapidly, mm. so... That's actually how I found out about you was from what well, my girlfriend told me about you from Instagram because she's from Peru uh, with Croatian roots and saw your pic a couple of your pictures and said, oh, there's this Peruvian photographer. You know, I guess you were in the rainforest somewhere there. And then she looked. And yeah, she was just, fight, hey, fight yeah. yeah. What was that experience like? Um, one of my favorite places, definitely, like the Amazon part of, of Peru. So it was a trip to Antarctica actually so I had some time in in between because you know the expedition starts on that date so I, I was coming back from Australia and I was like okay what to do like I have something like two weeks before maybe I can go to Peru and then I was digging like okay Iktos sounds like a interesting city you know the biggest city in the world where you cannot not approach with a car it has to be an airplane or a boat and it's in the Amazon part. Let's go there. So no plans at all. I just went over there. I was losing myself in, in the city. And I entered this agency who have this tours, you know, to take, take you to the jungle. And usually they take groups, like something like uh, you have this experience, this experience, and that. And I said, okay, I don't want that. We have a guide who speaks proper English and is willing to take me along but to the people who are living over there I want to skip those like you know places which is like exposed to a lot of tourists not that I have something on no mind but you know I, I want to hear and, and capture those stories and yeah so we went to the Yagua people very interesting experience uh, the way they live and especially their connection with the wildlife you know when you see the slots and the monkeys and you know the shelters for the wild animals like that you have a anaconda which is like let's call it half free so she can go but she's in a shelter because they are uh, let's call it supporting her with the food so she's you know it's another zoo it's let's call it like an open zoo every animal can actually go but they don't go because they have enough food over there so it's it was an inter interesting experience over there and the tribes of course you know like uh, they are with those lots like we are here with dogs and cats like you're like in the literally like in a, in a jungle book and for me it's like i felt like a child so i went to antarctica spent one month over there and then I had again some time before I go to Mexico and went back to Yagua people. So that's why it's in, in a few months. Wow. Do you have any idea of how many countries in total that you've been to? Oh, most of the people are asking me that. I, I actually I never did the count because <laughs> I, I'm not good with I'm not good with numbers. 
actually i don't like much numbers never did, did like the, the math thing in school so yeah one day i i, I will need to do the count yeah one day <laughs> um well now you're you're living in Imotski, right now yeah it's actually a small village vinyanik gorni it's uh in between Imotski and Postre, I, my village is, uh, is on the border. I see. Okay. Uh, and how how is all this experience? I mean, traveling, you've been to so many countries that you, you can't even count, seeing so many different cultures. What different perspective does that give you on your own country, on your own um, you know, home where you're living now? Well, it helped me in general in life with many things, you know. Most of the people have those moments when they think they have a problem. And after all my trips and uh, moments that I saw that people have, you know, really like hard issues with uh, not having food, not having shelter and, and, and illness that they cannot, you know, something that is basic for us, they don't have it. I don't see any any like of those moments as a problem. That just, you know, you have a situation, you, you will solve it like in a, few minutes or a few days so you know why to bother and be stressed about it like you can deal with that or if it's a problem that you cannot solve well you cannot solve you just continue with your life so in general it helped me a lot with this but uh, i don't know to to change the positive mindset i think i'm still the same person but it's now it's another level now huh well that's good then you're more you have a more positive mindset and different perspective on on small yeah, definitely. problems and awareness about the, the nature and the people. So, you know, my goal is now to share what's happening around, how we need to protect what we have and respect and be grateful for this planet hmm. because we are temporary here. So let's not ruin the thing around us on this short period that we are spending here. Yeah, I agree. When you're here in Croatia, do you have any particular spots or places that you like to go as far as taking pictures or scenery wise well, my favorite spot is definitely a waterfall called kubavica it's on setina river so it's kind of like 25 minutes drive from my home and then you need to do a hike like half an hour through the canyon so it's it's a wonderful double waterfall like it's peaceful it's rare that you see people over there, really rare. So it's really a meditation place. Hmm. And are you taking pictures there or it's more just to get away from everything and relax a little? Of course, I did photos, but, you know, I also went many times without doing photos. Hmm. As my friend would say, the best photos are kept here. Yeah, that's true. Um, Goran, aside from photography, are you doing anything else? Are you still teaching? I know that you were teaching for a while. Yeah, still teaching, but, you know, thing that basically no one knows or my little circle knows that I'm a passionate gardener and like planting trees and, and shaping like this Japanese style, Japanese garden, everything about mm -hmm. it. I'm like kind of like, I can say on the same level, like with photography, maybe even a little bit above. So every wow. free moment that I have, I plant trees and it's brick property, like taking care. So yeah, if you have one day opportunity to come, I'll let, definitely invite you to see that uh, that park. I'm working on that already like more than 20 years. Wow, really? I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm I'm down in Makarska often for the summer, so that's pretty close to. Uh... It's very close. So in half an hour, you you can reach the the spot. Wow! Yeah, I'll have to take you up on that. That would be cool. That's the like the bonsai bonsai trees, the Japanese. Yeah, that, actually, it's it's Nivaki style. So bonsai technique, it's you know to keep the tree. Small, let's call it. That's the simplest way to explain. But in Nivaki style, it, it's the shape of the tree is the same, but actually you you keep it outside. It's not that uh, little little uh, ball that you play with the roots and stuff. So it's kind of like similar. Mm -hmm. For bonsai, you need to be ready. I'm not ready yet. You need to be really dedicated for that. Ah, wow, that's that's another level above or. Mm -hmm. Another level, and you cannot be like uh, traveling for one month and uh, not wow. having here. So, you know, you need to be home. And I'm not ready for that. 
how often do you have to trim that or work on that every day, every couple of days? Are we talking about bonsais? Yes, yes. Well, you know, I had a book, I read some things, so, you know, I don't know, I think already 10 days it's too much to not to be present. Wow, so yeah, that's definitely no long traveling, I guess, if you're, if you plan on doing that. Huh. Well, Goran, speaking about, you know, planning, what other future plans or projects do you have for yourself as far as photography or, you know, anything else as well? So, you know, I already mentioned this, this big nature park that I'm working on and part of the park is going to be a, a let's call it a gallery house, you know, so you can rent, it will be uh, my art inside, my friend's art and so nature experience, art experience, so you can spend some time and uh, you'll have a, every person who is going to sleep over over there will have a task. I will prepare the tree and you need to plant it. So you will have your own tree on, on that property. So every time when you come back, this tree will wait for you. And, you know, it's a big forest. Uh, I'm planning to make activities over there. You know, it's, it's a trail. So that that's the with cabins also. So that that's the future plan. Wow, that sounds pretty cool. So it's like an interactive park museum type. Yeah, and I want okay. to like each guest to have a personal, let's call it accommodation, personal feeling over there. You know, you give something and you take something from from this spot. Hmm. I like that. Do you have a date? um a, a time that you think it'll be ready by i think the the first main phase will be done in four or five years because it takes a lot of work and paperwork especially for the house so uh me and my, my wife we are dealing with that at the moment hmm. yeah i'm sure that's a lot of work um and last question for you here goran um so you've been to a lot of different countries. Is there any that you haven't been to that's on your bucket list that you think I have to go to this country at some point or this place or area? Yeah, actually many. I don't know. Papua, Papua New Guinea. Again, they have interesting tribes over there. And uh, Vanuatu Island also. Like I don't know if you heard, like the bungee jumping actually is coming from Vanuatu. It, it's an insane story. They, they would put like, it's not a rubber thing over there. They would jump from this improvised thing, breaking bones, even like uh, some people didn't even survive. So wow. interesting story here, like uh, the roots of bungee jumping coming from one other island. So then Nagaland, they have also that, those head hunters over there, former, like it's not, they're not doing that anymore, but stories like that, I'm curious. Of course, like I'm impressed to see landscapes when you're over there, but for me, it's always like you know, someone's story mm -hmm. about the people, about the connection. Um, okay, well, Goran, I want to thank you, you know, so much for coming here on the All Things Croatia podcast. Uh, before we go, do you have can you shout out, you know, your Instagram and do you have a website or somewhere else where people can find, you know, your work and see the pictures you're taking? Yeah, basically, my, my main media is instagram my professional video work is on vimeo and this is it i i have a youtube channel but not so active over there facebook also not so active so in general it's it's instagram and it's more than enough i started with tiktok and it was like too much okay i cannot handle <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I, I need to li live my real life a bit yeah, exactly. TikTok for me also is too, I had it for a little bit too much, too much social media having every kind. So TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. Like everything else, finding your balance. Yeah, exactly. Well, Goran, thank you so much for uh, finding the time to come on the podcast here. And I wish you the best of luck in you know your future projects. And I'll link everything, you know, your website and Instagram, anything you want me to link so people can find your stuff. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Of course.